Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to another episode of the Tech Blog Rider podcast. Now, as you all know by now, I'm passionate about featuring as many voices as I can from all over the world on this show and learning from their tech and startup stories along the way. I need a flag on the wall because I really want to start documenting how many places in the world have shared their story on here because that list is getting very long now after what nearly 350 episodes but tonight i wanted to look at a company called Trezorith. now they're an end-to-end encrypted file sync and sharing service for businesses and they are a swiss hungarian company providing secure yet easy to use file sync for more than 10,000 businesses globally now they've appeared on my radar after getting great recognition in the tech industry and also the tech media out there on those usual websites that we all frequent each day so buckle up and hold on tight because i want to beam your ears all the way to budapest so we can speak with the ceo of trezorith so a massive warm welcome to the show can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do i'm istvan lama ceo of uh, trezorith which is a uh, end and encrypted uh, dropbox alternative and um about my myself, I'm a cryptography engineer by education, which is nothing to do with that people. Um, my profession is uh, originally de- uh, designing um, encrypted systems to hide information. Now, Trezorith is a Swiss-Hungarian company providing secure yet easy-to-use file sync for more than 10,000 businesses globally. And your end-to-end encrypted file sync and sharing service for businesses is also receiving much-deserved widespread acclaim in the tech industry. But for anyone listening that is completely new to what you do, I mean, can you offer an overview of Trezorith and also what makes it unique from all those other solutions out there? Sure. Um, so end-to-end encryption is getting more and more attention as private data and, and just data the deep analyzing of data by companies like Google, Facebook is, is happening. Um, and with end and encryption, basically when you are communicating or collaborating with someone else over the internet, uh, the whole communication is encrypted from your device to the other participant device. There is no point of decryption, which is different from the current, current way of doing a collaboration because uh, if you, for instance, share a file through Google Drive, that is first uploaded to the Google servers. It's decrypted uh, there. They're analyzing, uh, scanning it. Uh, they may convert it to other formats. And then uh, the other participant downloads maybe through a, an encrypted channel. But still, uh, the third party, Google, got access to, to your uh, confidential files. In our case... Uh, the files are never decrypted, uh, so it's, uh, we cannot see the data. And in order to prove that, a couple of years ago, we said we give $50,000 to anyone who can hack us and open up our servers. So hackers can see what we see, and uh, no one could uh, hack us. And actually, the feedback was after 250 universities and 1,000 hacker teams registered uh, and failed, that it's, there is no point of this uh, competition because we only store encrypted data. Uh, so, but that was the, the, with this, we wanted to just prove our points uh, about uh, end-to-end encryption. So what are the biggest challenges and opportunities in encryption and cloud security in that space at the moment? A uh, big challenge that uh, people don't care about their uh, privacy. Yeah, uh, that's one one thing, and they are uh, getting more and more used to that. They are being monitored, and and um, they just ask, uh, uh, who will look at my data? Um, and I think it is it's uh, an ignorance we need to fight with in the twenty first century. I mean, in the other side, we are also dealing with technical hurdles with encryption. For instance, if we upload the data as a picture. Uh, there is uh, no way that we can create a thumbnail, a smaller picture out of it on the server side. So that's uh, where it's a very basic feature for, for websites and, and file sharing. This cannot happen because there is no way we can uh, process the encrypted data. And uh, there are science fiction cryptographic protocols to do that. 
but it's uh, still not practical to use. So that are the challenges. The good side, and also the, uh, the opportunities here, that regulation is pointing more and more towards uh, end-to-end encryption and pointing that, especially in the EU and in the UK uh, as well, that um, there is a uh, debate about that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> We don't want to go there. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, let's not go into that. Uh, uh, but um, in the EU, for instance, uh, the GDPR, what, which is coming to live next, next year, is explicitly uh, t- talking about and, and, and encryption, and that's a big opportunity uh, for for companies like us. Now you mentioned GDPR there. So, I mean, do you think that encryption is actually a great tool which helps to secure personal data that will help businesses that are just starting to take that GDPR requirement seriously? Do you think that's going to be a big help? Of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, the big problem with with uh, today data society that actually uh, data oriented society that data is getting more and more cr- uh, crucial in our life and we have uh, tons of data and it's traveling all around without having you know accounting at all it's something like having money and uh, transferring companies just transferring money to each other but there is no accountants who's tracking that it needs to be tracked. The accounting systems need to be introduced. This is uh, what the GDPR would like to do. Accounting how data flows in and flows out of the companies because it's a precious thing. Um, and and I think when uh, we are you know outsourcing some data uh, processing to your cloud, yeah. uh, we are actually trusting a third party uh, that they will manage uh, our data on a good way. But if it's encrypted, we don't need to trust that third party. They can do, for instance, just storing that data without trusting you know, that they will not look into that. Now, one of the questions I've got to ask you there is, where do you stand on governments wanting to weaken encryption or provide that backdoor for security purposes? Because for, for me, at least, it seems quite alarming that authorities do not appear to understand the dangers of doing this. But I'm curious, what are your thoughts around that? Uh, I I think it's a stupid. It would be a stupid move to yeah. uh, uh, to to ban it. Simply, I mean, basically, you are shooting yourself in the foot because uh, you cannot stop mathematics at the border. Open source uh, cryptography tools are out there, and basically, if you ban uh, cryptography, uh, strong crypt- cryptography is already out there. Yeah. So, if someone would like to do something bad, they can use that tool while uh, legit people who might not want to do something bad, but uh, want to follow the rules, uh, need to use that weekend uh, something. That's just stupid. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Uh, But before we dwell on that too much, I mean, can you tell me more about your updated UI and expanded data control features? I think you've recently added to your business plan, is that right? Yes, um, so just about uh, our company, uh, as Enten Encryption, comes uh, up and our company starts to implement our products inside their organization. For instance, uh, we have banks as clients. And Trezorith can be uh, can be a tool to, uh, to uh, leak data from, from the organization without uh, footprints. Uh, because uh, we cannot look into the data. The organization cannot look into the data either. So the employees can steal data without without uh, leaving any trace. So that's why we introduced a tool where uh, the admin, the account owner, can go in and having a master key for uh, the employee's uh, uh, accounts and can go in and look into the data. For instance, a bank, uh, there is an inside trading investigation. Uh, they can go in and look into the data of, uh, of an employee. Still, we cannot log uh, and do that. There is no way we are still keeping up this end-to-end encryption, this zero knowledge uh, uh, property of the uh, of the system. So, is Trezorith only aimed at businesses, or do you serve home users too? Because I think there is a great deal of awareness now around the importance of protecting our own personal privacy when we're online too, isn't there? It is. Um, more and more people are getting conscious about it, and and uh, and we offer. Uh, personal uh, plans as well. Uh, actually, we have multiple plans uh, um, and subscriptions for 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 them. Uh, and it, we 
uh, serve them uh, and, and we provide, but it's also uh, important uh, that uh, we, we actually provide almost the same tool for businesses as well, because we believe that uh, the consumerization uh, whatever uh, tool is good for a single person should uh, good, be good uh, for um, for a business person or business uh, uh, a customer, but control features need to be there. So, but actually, what uh, the, uh, for an end user, they they get almost the same uh, user experience. So, what's next for Trezoris? I mean, is there anything else you can reveal about what's on your roadmap for the next twelve to eighteen months, for example? We are um, actually moving towards being the the cloud encryption company. So we would like to be become and uh, uh, having more presence in other areas uh, of end-to-end encrypted uh, services to leverage our experience for that. Um, and and we would like to uh, in just in general uh, strengthen the collaboration features what we uh, have and what we focus uh, right now with that uh, uh, helping our current customers and our future uh, future uh, customers to uh, use our product value. And just a little bit about yourself, didn't you also feature on the Forbes Europe 30 under 30 uh, in technology list? I mean, what kind of impact did that have on your profile? It, have you found it's helped or hindered your ambitions along the way? <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's a great honor to be you know, listed there. I was uh, a bit surprised, I mean, especially when I uh, met with the people, the other people uh, who were listed on, uh, on, 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 this, uh, on this list. That it was just amazing that uh, uh, people, uh, young people, other young people, what they can achieve. And I, I felt uh, myself a little bit small you know yeah. it's uh, we hi okay i i fight for privacy and all this stuff but i i uh, truly uh, met with people who uh, achieve a way way more before they reached 30 and uh, that was a, a sort of a, a natural jealousy but it's also looking into myself that okay i need to do more mm-hmm. so to uh, to grow up to this and also the people that you use around but it's a, a very motivating. So it's a very motivating that uh, I have been listed with uh, such uh, great talents and uh, such uh, successful uh, number of people. I've spoken to a lot of people around this subject as well, and the old imposter syndrome that sneaks in when you're surrounded by so many great people. But it's it's never really an, a competitive environment, is it? It all seems to be that when you get so many like-minded people in the room, you seem to inspire each other, don't you? I think, uh, in a way, some sort of competitive. Uh, there is some competition, but it's uh, I I rather think about that as on an inspiring way. So not not in a bad way, you know. You yeah. you want to you get better because you want to get better than that person. You want to get better because you want to simply just improve yourself. Yeah. Uh, and, and you see that uh, it's possible. So it's, uh, it's more, yeah, it's more inspiring. Well, a huge thank you for coming on today. But before I let you go, can you remind the listeners of the Trezorith website and also how they can contact either yourself or a member of your team if they have any questions about encryption or even anything we've spoken about today? Sure. Um, so, uh, you can visit www.treasury.com or uh, drop an email to support at treasury.com if you have any question about the uh, the products uh, or uh, the service or if you, if you uh, uh, don't find something working properly um, or if you have something about the company uh, or in general, then press at treasury.com. Well, again, a huge thank you for coming on today because I think you've achieved so much in such a short space of time, but yet you remain remarkably humble. And encryption is such a massive subject at the moment. And I think we're all starting to take our own personal privacy online much more seriously and businesses even more so. So a big thank you for coming on and just opening our eyes on this subject. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I think we've all seen the news headlines about weakening encryption and considering that our messages, banking and indeed entire infrastructure now sits behind it, I agree with tonight's guest that it will be nothing short of reckless to even try to weaken it or create back doors. Because encryption is the unsung hero that keeps us all safe. And I think it's great to hear how this Swiss-Hungarian-based company is providing secure yet easy-to-use file sync for more than 10,000 businesses globally. And also getting that great recognition that they deserve right across the tech industry. 
But what do you think of tonight's show? Or do you have any insights to share about encryption? As always, let me get your voice onto this show too by emailing me at techblogwriter at outlook.com or you can always tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. Where do you listen to the show? On a walk or run? When cooking or washing the dishes? At the gym? Walking the dog? Or is the Tech Blog Writer podcast the soundtrack to your commute? Why not let Neil know by tweeting him at Neil C. Hughes? Or say hello on the Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash podcast. I'm sure you agree tonight was a fascinating subject that affects us all in some way. And I think it's great that both people and businesses are starting to take it seriously, especially with GDPR on the horizon, which is going to cause more than a few headaches next year, I think, for businesses that fail to take it more seriously. But I'm afraid we're out of time tonight, so... I just wanted to offer a big thank you to each and every one of you that decide to tune into this show and get to listen to the so many different stories from all around the world that I feel fortunate to hear and I hope you do too. So a big thank you for listening and until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.